everyone. Pleasure to be back with Asian News for today. Still with me, Vanessa. China and Indonesia will work together on a vaccine fight against COVID-19. Chinese President Xi Jinping says China will continue to carry out vaccine cooperation with Indonesia to jointly resist the vaccine divide. In a phone conversation with Indonesian President Joko Widodo, she says that the trade investment cooperation between China and Indonesia has grown against the trend in the context of COVID-19 pandemic, showing strong resilience and great potential. President Xi adds, China welcomes Indonesia to seize the opportunity of China's construction of new development pattern, advance the pragmatic cooperation between the two countries in various fields. China welcomes Indonesia to increase exports of quality products to China and supports Chinese enterprises to increase investment in Indonesia. Stressing both China and Indonesia attach great importance to safety and health of the people and oppose vaccine nationalism and points out that the cooperation between the two countries on COVID-19 vaccines is at the forefront of the world. Meanwhile, Jokowi congratulates the 1100th anniversary of the founding of the Communist Party of China. Jokowi says Indonesia and China are good friends and brothers. The Indonesian side hopes to learn from China's relevant experience, deepen the economic and trade relations between the two countries, actively promote the construction of the Jakarta-Bandung Railway, deepen cultural exchanges, and jointly build the Belt and Road. Jokowi thanks China for overcoming difficulties and providing valuable support to Indonesia in its fight against COVID-19 and hopes to continue to strengthen cooperation with China in vaccine production. Typhoon occurs in the eastern Catanduanes province of the Philippines caused by strong winds. Huge waves are sighted in Gigmoto, a small town in the eastern province of Catanduanes, Philippines, a super typhoon Surigae brushed past the country's eastern shores. Video obtained by Reuters shows waves pummeling a crumbling seawall as a storm surge passed by the area. Meteorological authorities in the Philippines say that moderate heavy rains are expected over past of eastern and northern Philippines. The typhoon is expected to bring winds of up to 120 km per hour to parts of the eastern Philippines, but the center of the storm is expected to remain at sea. According to the Philippine Atmospheric, Geophysical and Astronomical Services Administration, that winds up to 215 km per hour are forecasted at the center of the storm, but the typhoon is not expected to make landfall. Thailand reports fourth record daily increase in coronavirus cases this week. Thailand reports 1,543 new coronavirus cases, the sharpest increase since the start of the pandemic and the fourth record rise this week amid the third wave of infections in the Southeast Asian country. While Thailand has up to now managed to keep case numbers relatively contained compared to many other countries, the new outbreak comes as many have traveled during the country's Songkrang New Year holidays and with vaccination rates still low. Health official Chawet San Namwat says the measures are formulated based on the case numbers in the each area and will be proposed to the coronavirus task force for approval. Thailand's lockdown came in late March last year with a curfew imposed in April before seeing months of relatively lenient restrictions as cases remained largely under control. New cases bring the total number of infections to 37,453 with deaths remaining at 97. The Japanese government asks Myanmar to release journalists detained in Myanmar.
Japan's government says Myanmar authorities detained a Japanese journalist in Yangon, adding that it was trying to seek his release. PBC Burmese quoted a witness as saying freelance journalist Yuki Kitazumi is picked up from his home and taken into custody by troops on night day. He asks to raise both hands and takes away in a car. Japan's government spokesman describes the journalist as a man in his forces without naming him. Chief Cabinet Secretary Katsunobu Kato tells a news conference that the government was seeking details on the circumstances surrounding the journalist's detention. According to his Facebook page and interviews with online media, Kitazumi runs a media production company, Yangon Media Professionals, and used to be a journalist with the Nikkei Business Daily. He was arrested previously in February while covering protests against the February 1st coup, but was released soon afterwards. Meanwhile, according to the Assistance Association for Political Prisoners Activist Group, 737 people have been killed by security forces since the coup, and 3,229 remain in detention. Japanese journalists call on the Myanmar military to release journalists detained in Yangon. A group of journalists in Japan called on Myanmar's junta to free a colleague, Yuki Kitazumi, detained in Yangon, following a crackdown on media amid ongoing protests against the military coup of an elected government. We want the junta to stop oppressing the citizens of Myanmar. And we seek the swift release of the many detained journalists, including Kitazumi, who strove to tell the truth. The group of journalists starts an online petition addresses to Myanmar's junta and the Japanese government, calling for Kitazumi's release. So far, about 2,000 people have signed the petition. The journalist also asks the Japanese government to apply more pressures on Myanmar's authorities to free Kitazumi, who detains evening by the military outside his home in Yangon for allegedly spreading falsehoods. Japanese Chief Cabinet Secretary Katsunobu Kato tells a briefing that Kitazumi is currently detained in Yangon Insane Prison. Kitazumi, who runs a media production company, arrested while covering protest against the February 1st coup, but was released soon afterwards. Thousands of people pray at Tokyo Shrine to hold a memorial for the victims who died during protests against the coup in Myanmar. More than a thousand people gather at Tokyo's Jozozi Temple to hold a memorial service for protesters killed following the military coup in Myanmar. Japanese and Myanmar Buddhist monks chanting sutra together at the area allocated to the vigil in front of the main hall of the temple in central Tokyo filled with people praying. According to the organizer Japan-Myanmar Friendship Association, about 1,100 faithful both Japanese and Myanmar nationals take part to the vigil. In a joint statement by Japan and the United States following the first in-person meeting between the Premier Yoshihide Suga and President Joe Biden, the two countries condemned violence in Myanmar and urged a swift return to democracy but Japan is more circumspect to impose sanctions than the United States and others given Myanmar's strategic importance and its ties with the country. The Association of Assistance of Activist Groups for Political Prisoners says Myanmar's security forces have killed more than 730 people in their bid to end protest against the coup. Myanmar protesters welcome parallel governments to confront military coup. <laughs> protesters in Yangon continue to call for the New Year's strike while welcoming the newly formed National Unity Government by pro-democracy politicians. 
Dozens of protesters wait for an opportunity between police patrolling to quickly gather in the street. Pro-democracy politicians, including ousted members of parliament, announced that the formation of National Unity Government on Friday, including Aung San Suu Kyi and leaders of the anti-coup protesters and ethnic minorities. According to a tally by the Assistant Association Activist Group for Political Prisoners that Suu Kyi is among 3,141 people arrested in connection with the coup. Xi Jinping encourages Tsinghua University strives for new achievement. Chinese President Xi Jinping encourages Tsinghua University to take innovation to a new level and make its contribution to building an academic system of Chinese characteristics. During an inspection tour of Tsinghua University ahead of its 110th anniversary, President Xi gave full credit to Tsinghua for its progress made in recent years after viewing an exhibition of the university's academic and scientific achievements inside the main building of the campus. President Xi affirms that Tsinghua needs to fully utilize its advantages in scientific research to strengthen basic research and increase independent innovations. In addition, she meets with representatives of the university's senior scholars and young faculties, thanking them for their contributions to their respective academic posts. He also expresses his respect to the senior professors and encourages young faculty members to continue making breakthroughs in their fields of studies. The president asked Xinhua to continue cultivating high-end talents and make breakthrough in scientific research and development to serve the country and drive forward the progress of human civilization. Xinhua University has been founded in 1911, is one of the most prestigious universities in China, with a QS World University ranking, placing it 15 in the world by 2020. The university has produced many excellent alumni, including President Xi himself. During the meeting, United States and South Korea discussed climate change in Seoul. United States Special Presidential Envoy for Climate Change, John Kerry, met South Korean Foreign Minister Chung eun yong in Seoul ahead of President Joe Biden's latest summit on climate. Kerry arrives at the official residence of South Korean Foreign Minister to attend a banquet hosted by Chung following his visit to Shanghai as part of an Asia trip aimed to discuss international efforts in tackling global warming. Seoul's Foreign Minister says Chung and Kerry had two previous phone calls and are expected to discuss ways of boosting cooperation on climate change measures. Biden will hold a virtual summit with world leaders on climate change this week, which is his first major foray into climate talks since re-entering the Paris Climate Accord. The Ramadan Bazaar reopened after being cancelled last year due to the coronavirus. The bazaar known as the biggest in Malaysian capital closed last year due to the COVID-19 outbreak in the country. Fortunately, this Ramadan, dozens of bazaars have been allowed to be established in the capital. They should have fewer kiosks that are further away than usual, temperature checks, customers' registration and crowd control. Residents are still happy to visit. I'm very grateful and happy they opened this year. It feels like returning to normal. Any normal with a mask and following the rules. The bazaar is a popular feature in the month of Ramadan, which is enjoyed by all races and religions. While the residents are happy and very appreciative being able to run a business again this year because this will really help them. But for now, people here will only enjoy the Ramadan bazaar, one colorful Ramadan tradition they have been missing since last year's spring.
the appearance of a new moon over Mecca on the night of April 13, this year's of holy month of Ramadan begins for Muslims around the world. During the 30 days of Ramadan, Muslims fast during the day, do not eat and drink. Some also practice charity and donations of food outdoors. Thank you for today. Stay safe, stay healthy, keep washing your hands, use your mask and maintain the social distancing rule. Have a nice weekend.